So let's talk about the difference between RNA and DNA. It's really important that you understand they're very different, but you need them both. And by the end of these slides, you should be able to tell me the difference between the two, why we need them, and where they can be found inside our bodies. So first, let's review what you already know about DNA. If you look here on the screen, there are five things you already know. You know the number of strands. DNA is double-stranded. That means there's a double helix. The sugar used is deoxyribose. Base pairs are A, T, G, and C. And its purpose is to store information. You can find DNA inside the nucleus of every cell. And now the new stuff. Um, the same information on the last slide is seen here in the middle column. But now you can compare that information with that of RNA on the far right hand column. RNA is just single stranded. There is no double helix. There's just one strand of information. Instead of deoxyribose, RNA uses ribose. Base pairs used in RNA are A, U, G, and C. And the purpose of RNA, the reason you need it is because it copies and delivers information. You can find RNA in the nucleus of every cell and in the cytoplasm of every cell. You'll find out a little bit more about that in just a moment. And I don't know about you, but a picture for me goes a long way in explaining something. So I found this great picture on the internet that shows RNA and DNA side by side. So here it's really easy to see that RNA's just got a single strand. You can see the base pairs there on the far left of the screen. You've got cytosine, guanine, adenine, and uracil. And then there on the right half of the screen you can see DNA. And there you see double-stranded, twisted ladder shape with the base pairs C, G, A, and T. One question that I get asked a lot is why? Why do you have to change T to U when you're using RNA? Well, the sugar used in RNA, that ribose that we talked about, it's got a shape that doesn't fit with thymine. It, the two puzzle pieces, they just don't fit together. So um, you have to use a base pair that does fit, and uracil, we just call it U, is substituted for thymine in an RNA strand because it fits, all the pieces fit. And you can see on the screen a picture of the actual molecules. They're very, very similar. Thymine just has a little extra stuff stuck to it. And your cell doesn't, which makes it easy to fit with the sugar in RNA. Now this next part isn't on the test. It's a little more complicated than you need to know um, for my biology class. But sometimes kids like to see the difference between deoxyribose and ribose, the sugars in DNA and RNA. And here it's really easy to see that the difference between the two is just one little atom or molecule. You've got hydrogen by itself on deoxyribose, and you've got an OH group on the ribose. And that's that small little difference, that is enough to make the function of these two molecules completely different from each other. So a really great teenage question I get asked a lot is why? Why RNA? Why, if we have DNA, then why in the world would you need RNA? Well, here's the thing. DNA cannot leave the nucleus of the cell. It's a really important molecule. It's so important that it's designed to stay put. If you let that DNA leave the cell, anything could happen to it. It could be damaged or changed or destroyed. And it is a very important original copy of information that can't be replaced once it is changed. When a message needs to be sent somewhere else in the cell, the DNA can be used, but it can't be sent. So the information comes from DNA but RNA will go ahead and make a copy of that information and then send it to the other parts of the cell. And this is a great picture on this screen. It shows you how DNA can kind of unwind 
a little bit there in the middle, and then RNA as a single strand will go in and base pair with the DNA in order to make a message or a copy of this information. I always really like to compare things that are happening inside us to things that you might actually understand. <laughs> and so when we talk about DNA and RNA, it's easy to think about it because what do you all think about right now? Getting your driver's license. So you think of the DMV and your driver's permit. Now the Department of Motor Vehicles, the DMV, they're going to keep the original copy of information that you give them. They're not going to send it with you. They need to keep it and store it and keep it safe so it can't be changed or damaged or anything like that. And what they give you is your permit. You can think of that kind of like RNA. If it's lost or destroyed or damaged, it can be replaced. So there you have it. That is the difference, or those things are the difference between DNA and RNA. And here are the same questions you saw at the beginning. Let's see if you can answer them. You want to know the difference between the two, why you need both of them, and where you can find them. I'll put the answers up on the screen in just a few seconds.